Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, of course, I thought that I would give my little fight review of the Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez versus Julio Cesar Martinez fight, I believe, all in overall. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm getting his name correctly, and I believe all in all that I am. Anyways, this was a very, very big fight overall that, of course, happened in one of the lighter weight classes yesterday. This was a title fight. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, of course, for those of you that don't know, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez in his last fight had a very, very big mega fight. Actually, a rematch with one of the current top 10 pound for pound fighters on most lists out there, of course, against Mr. Juan Francisco Estrada. And of course, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez did end up losing a split decision to Juan Francisco Estrada. I personally thought that Roman Gonzalez won the fight, I believe, about seven rounds to five. I did not think that it was the best of decisions, but it is what it is. But at the end of the day, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, at 34 years old, I believe this current moment in time, he was able to get back up on that horse and he was able to step back into the ring with another very, very decent fighter, a Mexican fighter by the name of Julio Cesar Martinez. And I've seen Julio Cesar Martinez before, and even though I don't necessarily think that he is the perfect fighter, for someone to beat Julio Cesar Martinez the way that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez was able to beat him, I thought that it was a very thoroughly impressive performance. And to be quite honest with you, I don't even think that this fight was anywhere near competitive. That's not me saying that, you know, Martinez did not give it a go. That's not me saying all in all that he did not try to win this fight, even though some of the rounds, especially in the latter part of the fight, the second half of the fight, I do think that, you know, a little bit of him was in survival mode because you could hear him, you know, after round six, I believe his corner asked him, how are you feeling? And he said, I feel tired. And basically what that means is that, you know, and I'm not questioning Julio Cesar Martinez as, you know, conditioning or anything like that. I think the majority of the time that he is in good conditioning, and I think that he was in good conditioning, and I think that he more than likely trained very well for this fight. I just think that it was one of those instances to where he was pretty much in the ring more than likely with a legend, and then there was a person that more than likely is just that much greater than he was. It just is what it is. And certain fighters like that, when they get in the ring with certain ring legends like that, and you know, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, he's overall been somewhat of a mixed bag over the past several years. At one point in time, he even had so much acclaim by many people to even call him the number one pound for pound fighter, which I kind of understand at the time. Now, of course, there's a lot of people that would acclaim that that ranking was vastly overrated at the time, and I also would somewhat understand that. You know, there's a certain amount of people that would state that his ranking as the number one pound for pound fighter was purely because they did not want certain black fighters to be the number one pound for pound. And I would understand that to a certain degree. But what I will say is this. When we take a look at Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez, does he have certain faults in his style? Is he a person that, in my view, maybe when I take a look at him on the surface, is he a person that maybe I take a look at him and I say, wow, he's as slick or he's as multidimensional as a Terrence Bud Crawford or a Vasily Lomachenko or a Canelo Alvarez or maybe an Errol Spence Jr. or maybe a Tyson Fury? No, maybe he's not on that level or maybe Alexander Usyk if you want to compare him in that category as well. Do I think that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is necessarily on that same skill set? Maybe not. Maybe you could argue that some of those fighters that I just recently mentioned, of course, are decently more skilled than him. Or I'm not going to say just way, 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 way above him, but that more than likely in terms of boxing ability that they probably are above him. But what I will say about Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is this. I do think that sometimes his boxing ability has almost gotten to the point at this point in time to where it's actually almost a little bit underrated. You know, Chocolatito is a four-weight division champion for a very good reason. Chocolatito, when it comes down to it, we all know mainly what his game plan is going to be. He's mainly overall going to try and break you down. He's going to go forward on you. He mainly overall is going to be try to be very swift, you know, on the inside. He's basically going to kind of shift in and out, somewhat shoulder roll, overall move his head around, and he's going to try to set you up for certain counters and shots on the inside. You know, the way that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez fights, it almost reminds me overall of a very similar fashion in the way that Roberto Duran fought with some of his opponents. For some of you that never watch Roberto Duran that much, or for, so for, maybe for some of you that are a little bit older that may watch my channel and you remember the great Roberto Duran, of course there was this one great fight against this 154 pound champion I believe at the time that he fought. I don't remember what year or what time frame it was, but he fought this one 154 pound champion I believe called Davey Moore. Now in my opinion, Davey Moore <laughs> wasn't really someone that was, should be remembered as the creme de la creme, especially on the Sugar Ray Leonard or Marvin Hagler or Duran or Tommy Hearns type of level. 
But at the end of the day, Davey Moore was looked at as a very, very decent champ. And I believe that he'd even, you know, came off of a win over the greats. I believe uh, that one Puerto Rican fighter back in the day, you know, the youngest champion overall at the time. But I don't know. Uh, Wilfredo Benitez, I believe was his name. Uh, I believe Davey Moore was able to beat him. But if I'm incorrect about that, someone correct me. Anyways, when it comes down to it, if you take a look at the way Roberto Duran fought, you know, <laughs> Davey Moore, there were certain times to where he would take hits in that fight. There were certain times to where he would actually take a lot of hits. But Roberto Duran, that was a part of his strategy in that fight. There are certain fighters to where, especially in certain fights, they may take a certain punch or they may even take a couple of punches to deliver one nasty blow. And Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez, what I'll give him credit for is this. Not only did he kind of remind me of that Roberto Duran style, but when it came down to it, his defense has actually also gotten much better. A lot of the times, even though Julio Cesar Martinez, in my opinion, tried to get through with his punches, a lot of the times he just couldn't. It is what it is, and I don't even think the fight was really that close. All the scorecards, you know, with the judges, even though I think that they were somewhat accurate, I think all in all that they all had it a little bit closer than what I had. I believe that I had it about 119 to 109. I think the only round that I gave the Julio Cesar Martinez was round five. Maybe there was a couple of others that you could have debated him as, you know, or debated for him. There was even one judge, I believe, that had it eight rounds before. I don't really know how <laughs> he scored it like that. But it is what it is. Maybe I would have to rewatch it upon a second viewing. But when it comes down to it, I thought that Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez did a fantastic job. And in my opinion, Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez, he will be remembered as a first ballot Hall of Famer. There's even been certain people overall on my channel that say that they believe that Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez is the greatest, you know, flyweight fighter of all time or the greatest fighter to compete within those very, very lightweight classes. And what I'll say is this. He certainly could be. I'm not necessarily going to say that with a definitive uh, you know, Mark, because I would need to view the history of it a little bit. But he certainly is one of the greater ones that I've seen. Of course, the great Mexican fighter Ricardo Lopez, I believe, fought within those weight divisions or the very, very lightweight divisions. Would Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez be above Ricardo Lopez on my list? I'm not necessarily sure because I never really watched that much of Ricardo Lopez. I would have to check him out for myself. You know, would he maybe be above someone... You know, if you were to talk about a lighter weight class fighter like a Manny Pacquiao, well, no, of course not. He can't ever be remembered over someone like a Manny Pacquiao, but maybe just in terms of a flyweight because he has more history there. Maybe could someone debate that he's a greater flyweight than what Manny Pacquiao was? Maybe, but I would even have to take a look at the history of Manny Pacquiao at the flyweight division. I, you know, I, I don't remember a whole lot of the flyweight history or, <clears throat> you know, down there, excuse me, that Manny Pacquiao overall had in his career. Or say overall, if you were comparing him to another decently great fighter that was at the lower weight classes, maybe like a Prince Nassim Hamed, you know, someone overall that I believe was a three-weight division champion, but overall did suffer that one big loss in his career. Maybe could you compare Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez to someone like him? Perhaps you could. Maybe could you even count him over someone like a Prince Nassim Hamed? You know, I would say this. I would say that I personally would. And I know a certain amount of people would disagree with that, but it is what it is. But at the end of the day, what I'll say about Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is this. And I remember overall, you know, watching this one channel. For those of you that don't know this channel, go ahead and check him out because I have a great amount of respect for this channel. And I think that he's usually very logical and objective and very, you know, very good at his analytical breakdowns. That's why I used to watch his channel. And this one channel, of course, is called Chronicles of Judah 144. And he used to say about Roman Martin, or excuse me, Roman Gonzalez, that even though he's a decent fighter, at least from the little bit that I heard him talk about him, he used to say all in all that, you know, he's somewhat of a one-dimensional fighter. And I think all in all that I understood where he was coming from. Because like I said, when you take a look at Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, he usually is only going to have one game plan <laughs> and one game plan only. And that game plan is usually going to, you know, be overall, you know, putting his muffs up when it comes down to it and trying to break you down almost like what a Rocky Marciano does when it comes down to it. Or, you know, sometimes like what some of those other fighters, all in all that mainly just kind of try to come in and break you down and what we would call a bully fighter. But what I will say is this. You know, if you look a little bit deeper, I think with Mr. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, yes, you know, I understand why certain people may call him a little bit one-dimensional or maybe he does not necessarily always have a plan B. But at the end of the day, I cannot deny that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, that he is a fantastic fighter. And in my opinion, he is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think that there's any denying that. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, even after this performance, in my view, you could maybe even debate him on the top 10 pound for pound list. That's how impressive I truly thought that it was. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez didn't just win this fight. He completely dominated the fight. In fact, to be quite honest with you, there's even some people you could have a legitimate debate that he won almost every single round in this fight. 
And I think that Julio Cesar Martinez, I thought that he really tried. I thought that he gave it a very, very good, tough try. And I gave him a lot of credit for his heart. And it must have not been easy trying to fight back and even sometimes go toe-to-toe to back Roman Gonzalez off of him when it came down to it. Because you could tell that Roman Chuck with Tito Gonzalez that the power when it came down to it and overall that his gas tank. And that's another thing that Roman Chuck with Tito Gonzalez really does not get credit for. He is a terrific athlete. Not only all in all does he have very excellent power, but he's a person that almost has an unlimited gas tank. He's a person that pretty much overall is one of those people to where he can throw, you know, a, a bunch of punches overall in bunches. And basically he never gets tired. He seems to never get tired. So Roman Gonzalez, just like a Tyson Fury here, just overall kind of like a Terrence Crawford or a Vasily Lomachenko. Those are certain fighters all in all that I watch and I say, you know what? They can pretty much throw all the living long damn day and they just don't get tired. Certain fighters like a Fury or a Lomachenko or a Crawford or a Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Those are just fighters to where they basically had stamina for days. It just is what it is. And if you're talking about older fighters, of course, Muhammad Ali had excellent stamina. Rocky Marciano had phenomenal stamina when it came down to it. You know, there's a few other fighters that perhaps I'm not aware of that their stamina also was phenomenal as well. You know, maybe a Hagler or a Hearns or Duran, someone that I'm not mentioning. You know, but those fighters, <laughs> their stamina, it was pretty phenomenal. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is one of the best gas tanks that I've personally ever seen. So Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, what I will say is this. Roman Gonzalez, you know, he has had some ups and downs in his career. He did, of course, lose to that one Thai fighter, I believe, that very decently skilled fighter who had a very decent game plan over him and was somewhat able to compete with him overall, not only with his size, but also his boxing ability. Yes, Roman Gonzalez has suffered a few losses in his career. But at the end of the day, I don't think that there's any denying that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, that this kid is actually something special. And of course, I really can't call him a kid anymore because the man is now 34 years old. <laughs> but I remember several years ago when Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, when he was ranked as the clear number one pound for pound fighter by a lot of people. And of course, a lot of people would, would have debated that. And of course, a lot of these channels, let's be real also, especially by the LDBC and new media, they basically try to put the narrative out there that Roman Chocolatito is very, very overrated. But the truth is about Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is that, yes, even though he has certain faults to his style, and maybe he's not always necessarily a, you know, a, a game, you know, plan fighter or someone that, you know, has plan after plan after plan. Maybe sometimes he can only be a plan A fighter. But he really is something phenomenal to watch. He is a person to where, you know, you know what he's usually going to do. But when you take a look at him, especially in some of those bigger fights, he is someone that not only brings a lot of the action, but even in terms of an offensive skill set, he is going to deliver. He truly is a very, very great treat to watch. And I think that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez overall does deserve a great amount of respect. Now, what is next for Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez? Well, hopefully we get to see Juan Francisco Estrada versus Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez trilogy. And basically, we'll see all in all who is, once and for all, definitively the better and the greater fighter between the two of them, hopefully without any controversy. Because I heard from a lot of people that the first fight that it was controversial, and the second fight I watched for myself, so I can definitely tell you that I thought that it was controversial. But at the end of the day, we'll see overall what happens with that. And let's say Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez ends up getting past him. Hell, maybe he doesn't end up getting past him. I would love to see Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez maybe face someone like again, Morigandau. Or especially someone like in Inoue if that fight were to happen. But I'm just not sure if that fight overall is possible at this point in time. We'll see all in all what happens. But it will be very interesting. We'll have to see all in all what ends up happening with Mr. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. We'll see overall what happens. And that's pretty much all I got for today. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you all later.